Who you represent and your position on the bail for record. My name is Nelson Roach. I represent the Texas Trial Lawyers Association, and I am speaking uh, against the bill. Um, as has happened many times, uh, I've had an opportunity to uh, meet with Mr. Elkins, and Mr. Elkins uh, has always had an open-door policy with us. He has always uh, met with us and listened to our concerns. That doesn't mean that we always agree with each other at the end of the day, but a lot of times we can narrow our disagreement, uh, and sometimes we can come up with compromises uh, and agreements, as we have done in the past. Our concern about this bill uh, is that the way the bill is currently worded, uh, it is very broad and sweeping uh, in its language. It would apply to any and all uh, transactions that are covered by the financial code, which would include um, any type of uh, consumer credit transaction, including credit cards, uh, mortgages on houses, um, retail installment contracts for, uh, you know, washing machines, cars, etc. cetera. Um, in speaking with uh, Representative Elkins, I think we outlined his concerns, I think, as he said when he opened uh, his concern was protecting small business uh, from being uh, being sued in class actions under circumstances where they, they don't really have the ability to defend themselves. And that's a very different situation from that of, for example, uh, Wells Fargo, for example, recently, uh, you know, was in a situation where they've been found to systematically, uh, fraudulently sign up their customers uh, with uh, phantom accounts, which obviously is a very different situation than a mom and pop, uh, you know, type business. Uh, and so uh, with that said, uh, as we've done in the past, uh, we're certainly willing to, uh, to uh, work with Representative Elkins. Uh, and, but as the bill is currently uh, worded, we are uh, against the bill, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions? I do. Um, picking up something uh, Chairman Elkin said, is, is there anything that prohibits these companies now from having this type of language contractually waiving class action rights? Well, the, the, uh, the, way, the, the way the language is, is, has, is generally done now is there's, these big companies are uh, usually inserting an arbitration agreement. And there's uh, uh, the Federal Arbitration Act preempts state law. And so there is a case that came out a few years ago that says if you have, you can have an agreement for arbitration to prohibit class action arbitrations, and that's enforceable under the Arbitration Act. My understanding that that may, uh, that may be changed uh, administratively here in the next few months, and I think that may be part of what is what is prompting prompting this bill. No, I, I understand. I'm just kind of curious, and we, we can talk after the hearing. I'm just, you know, is there anything statutorily or case law under unconscionability that precludes me from just having a contract that waives class action rights regardless of the arbitrability of it? I don't know that Texas has answered the question of whether or not it is unconscionable under under Texas law to waive uh, uh, class action rights. I, mean, I assume that's what we're getting to. There's nothing statutorily that precludes the waiver, so now we're under the unconscionability standard, and right. we just don't have a case one way or the other making that, that decision. That is my understanding. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, members? Thank you. Thank you.